Hello. Today we are going to go ahead and use the MANA GAL program to analyze an antenna that is uh, going to actually serve to show us the capabilities of this program. And uh, well, let's get started. By the way, the version that you're seeing right here of MANA GAL is the free version. There is a pro version, MANA GAL Pro which is paid and uh, but I'm finding that I'm using the free version and it's working very very well for me. Uh, just a couple of things to note. Uh, there's a menu bar at the very top with the usual buttons. File will allow you to create a new button when you want to analyze an antenna from the ground up or you can open an existing file that you might have had or reopen one that you might have been working on before. Uh, there are four tabs across the top and uh, the first one is geometry. It actually is where we define the antenna that we're working with and define the sources. In other words, how much voltage we're going to be applying and at which point. And uh, loads, any sort of inductive coils or capacitances that we might have added to our antenna. Uh, the next tab is view. This will allow us to, if you hold down the mouse and move it down or sideways, you're able to rotate and view your antenna in more detail. You can select the middle point of the antenna to focus on and then use this to zoom in or zoom out. And then the third button is really the main button uh, for, the, uh, for the program. This is the calculate button. This is actually what's going to be running the calculation for uh, the modeling of our antenna. Uh, notice that you have an Excel-like grid down at the very bottom here. And uh, you will have, for each one of these rows, you will have all of these parameters that are computed and are outputted by the program, such as the SWR, the gain, and uh, the elevation at which that maximum gain was at, and so on. Um, the other thing to note is that you also have ways to specify the ground. Now, to be fair, I've only found uh, any, any use for the real option here. Uh, why? Because we're not in free space. That would be something like in the space station. Uh, it's not a perfect situation. We're going to be dealing with a ground that is real. When you select real and you select ground setup, this window pops up in which you can actually specify uh, dielectric constants and conductivity and millisieverts per meter and such about the ground. And really it depends on how humid the ground is and properties of the ground, whether it's rocky or close to the water, salty water, etc. I find that I leave the default values here and that uh, seems to work fine with me. Of uh, more importance maybe is this checkbox right here. Here, by checking this, you're able to uh, tell the program to consider the use of radials, which is very important for vertical antennas. And, uh, you can actually enter the number of radials and the radius of the wire that you want to use. So pretty much that's an introduction to this program. When you finish this information here and you've defined the geometry, you click on Start, and that will go ahead and give you the results here. There are another, there are a couple of other buttons that are very useful that I find. One is optimization, and the other one is plots. Uh, we'll delve into those a little bit later. The fourth tab is very useful in that it actually shows you the far field plots. And uh, this is an azimuthal view of your antenna, as if you're, if you're flying over the antenna. And it'll show you if it's a focal antenna, if it's focused in one direction or another, it'll highlight those features. Think of a Yagi. A Yagi antenna will definitely be uh, focusing in one direction. So you'll see that focusing here. Uh, on the right hand side you have essentially an elevation plot. So you're looking at the cross section. In the case of a dipole it might be one big lobe uh, if it's close to ground. Uh, in a vertical you'll have two lobes and such and you'll be able to see at what point the maximum gain is, is found by the calculations of the program. And the other point is uh, following uh, the DX commander's example you can always uh, Define click in this elevation button five degrees so you can actually see how well your antenna design would work for 
long DX contacts. And, uh, and that's, that's about it. So let's go ahead and see an example. Click on the geometry tab and we'll go ahead and say, for example, let's create an antenna. We're going to go ahead and name it vertical antenna. We'll go ahead and define it to be from zero, 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 the origin, up to, say, about 10 meters. Remember, the scale is in meters, so you have to convert, you know, 32 feet to 10 meters and such. And uh, the other thing we want to leave is everything default. For poles, we'll go ahead and say we're going to put a source wire, and it's going to be on, a, on element one. We get this one right here from element one, the only element that we have. And we're going to go ahead and place it in the center, C. Now, as soon as we hit enter, it defines a one volt test current that is going to be a test volt that is going to be running up and down the antenna an AC test voltage. If we click on view, there's our antenna right there. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and change that source to the base, which will be more of a realistic one. We highlight the uh, antenna, right click on it, and you'll see that there's an option now to move the source to the beginning of the wire. So that drops the source down to here. The little loop right there is the source. The X would be a load. We don't have a load on here. We haven't defined it. We can go ahead and zoom in. Not, not very exciting because it's a single element. We can rotate it. We can hold the shift key and move this up and down. Fair enough. Calculate. We'll go ahead and leave the ground setup with 24 radii, which is pretty good. And we'll leave it at a height of zero meters because radio, I mean, the vertical is going to be actually sitting on the ground with its radius. We'll define it as copper wire, and we'll go ahead and click Start. The program in 0.11 seconds has figured that we have a very high resistance, 50.5 SWR, which is not good, and a DBI of 0 0.08. But for this example, is we'll leave it like that. The far field plots show that it's a very symmetrical antenna, but it does have uh, focusing for DX. It may be a good antenna for DX. Of course, the SWR being an issue and other issues, but if you highlight here, you see that it's a 0 0.1 decibel or DBI, decibel isotropic gain, which is not bad at all. And over here, if you highlight up and down, you'll see that it's at 18 degrees, 19 degrees. It's got 0 0.1 DBI. Not bad. And then uh, by clicking on elevation, if we put five degrees elevation, like we were talking about, that's the, uh, a good idea from Callum uh, to go ahead, the DX commander, to go ahead and give us an idea of how good a DX antenna this would be. We get a minus 5.2 dBr at five degrees, just something like that. That pretty much is it. Well, except let's go ahead and change this to 7.150. It being 10 meters, we're thinking that this would be a good quarter uh, wavelength antenna for uh, for the 40 meter band. So we'll go ahead and leave that there, leave everything the same, click on start. Now we're talking. Now our SWR has dropped to 1.71. Resistance is 34. Gain is 1.74, 1.72, and the elevation is 25.9. Our far field plots show 1.7 dBi, which is not bad at all. Elevation, we click on elevation and we put in five degrees of elevation and we see that we're at minus 5.0 dBi. That's what the number show. That pretty much is, uh, is a quick introduction. In the next videos, we'll look into optimization and the plots button, but that gives you an idea of how easy it is to enter an antenna in the uh, MANA-GAL program.